Building your dream home is all about creating spaces that you and your family have been dreaming about for years. Today on For Your Home, we're going to start the process of turning this house into a home. We've got great ideas for any size of family, so stay with us. It's all coming up next on For Your Home. For Your Home is made possible by... Anderson Hardwood, committed to producing distinctive, environmentally responsible hardwood flooring while helping to create a better planet for today and tomorrow. For more information, go to andersonfloors.com. Anderson, naturally. And by Ames. Ames True Timber has offered innovative landscape products since 1774, providing non-powered lawn and garden tools, wheelbarrows and lawn carts, watering products and decorative accessories, including planters. And by Custom Home Furnishings Academy, where the professionals learn to sew window treatments. I'm really excited about the progress we have made on this custom built home. When you're in the thick of things, it can sometimes seem like it's an endless task, especially during the construction stage. Things really start to move along once you have the flooring finished and the landscaping installed. That means we can finally get our occupancy permit and start to see our interior design take shape. Today the last of the carpet is being installed and the inspector is touring the space. Our visions are becoming reality. One of the best ways to express yourself is with paint. Not just any ordinary paint, but special faux finishes. We have assembled some of the best faux artists and muralists in the country to help us personalize this home. You're going to love their ideas. One of the best ways to express yourself is with paint. Now I'm not talking ordinary paint, I'm talking spectacular faux finishes. We have 15 different finishes going on in this house because we have collected some of the best faux finishers and artisans in the country. Now when you've got this much going on, you need a team leader. For us, it's internationally renowned Gary Lord. Hey Vicki, how you doing? I'm doing great honey, it's so good to see you. You too, I'm glad to be back. Well, you know, it's like Come help me because I wanted to share with my viewers all the great techniques that are being done out there now and we wanted to get this house in top shape. Exactly. The first question I always have to ask myself is where will I find somebody to do it and will I find the right person? I think that's a great question. I think all of us wonder that same thing. So my answer would be ask your friends, relatives, neighbors, because in today's marketplace, there is so much decorative painting taking place exactly. that you'll know somebody that's had it done if you have not. The other thing is you could go to a search engine and find out who in your local area is doing decorative painting and, and look at their And most of them have websites anyway. Almost all Go of them do it. anymore. Go check that out. Exactly. Well, we got a lot of great people together, a lot of finishes, yes, like Sherry here. Sherry, you're already up there working away on this finish. I and I can't wait to see how it turned out. Let's share with the viewers what you're going to be doing in here. Okay. This is the first room I came into when we came into this old farmhouse. This is a silk wallpaper look, which I thought would look great, classic, and and beautiful in here. I love this whole look, but you know, the color just wasn't right for us. Design was good, color was wrong. Right. It's beautiful. Treatment. Thank you. So, because this is the fabric that, we're going to use on the right. chairs mm -hmm. in here. So I use the same base colors to mix this, these colors. This is a base paint, and I use the t colorants from the base paint into a metallicized plaster. So we would be in the same family. This is a graphic scale because it's up so high. Uh -huh. Have beautiful moldings and beautiful ceiling. But we needed something to draw your eye up. Well, this for is going to be this is going to be awesome, and I'm I'm glad you're going to come across this though with the same deal, so right. we can get all that color. And that's the nice thing about working with a pro is you can change on a dime as the way you want to look. When you get back to work, you tell me it's going to take you four days in. Four here? days with the extra layer. All right. Well, Gary, we got some more finishes to <laughs> Great, share. Let's, let's go get see more.
I absolutely love the way this is turning out. It's just beautiful. Kim, share your vision. Well, I start with the pencil renderings just to give an idea of how the room will be spaced out once I paint the mural in it. Uh huh. And it opens up the room a little bit more because there's perspective of the water in the distance, the clouds in the distance, and the island in the distance, Neverland, which gives the room more depth and opens everything completely up. Well, you know what I love too is the windows because that was a problem when we started talking about trying to create something that was Peter Panish, and you just did a perfect job with that. Thank you. And I love the Thank touch you. that you're doing in, in the children's study area where you have the map of Neverland on there. And I understand you're going to put a dog on there too? Yes. I can't yes. wait to see it. We got more rooms to check. Come on, Gary. Show All right, let's go see more. Now, Gary, this hallway up here leads at one end to another child's bedroom, and the other end, our bonus room, which is going to be a total circus in there. Well, this is a large hallway with really no points of interest, but Summer and Sherry came up with a great idea for it. Thanks. Another mother-daughter team. I love it. Show us what you got. Okay, we started with the raspberry and pumpkin color. Uh huh. Because it's from matches the girls' the fabrics and the uh -huh. you know the circus. Love those colors. Um, so we plan to do a stripe alternating in the pumpkin and the raspberry with the circles embedded. I love so that. You kind of get the theme, but then it's not really too themey. Uh -huh. But it's kind of circusy that coordinates with that the other idea. room. The idea. Jugglers. But it's still, you know, you can still see it from other areas, so you don't want it to be too circusy. Exactly. You know? We want it to be subtle and just be interesting out here. Now, as subtle as raspberry and pumpkin can be, right, let me right. say. Okay, now my big question here is, how do you get your tape on so straight? Um, there's a couple different tricks. Uh, first, you want to start with the wall that you're going to see the most, your focal wall. Uh huh. Um, then you're going to measure the wall. You're going to start in the center, and you're going to move out so that it looks even. This is what everyone's going to see. Yeah, this is the main spot. Right. So um, we started with our center. We move okay. out. This is going to be a 14 inch stripe. We use a little tool. In this case, we use this. High tech. High tech paint stirrer. I got one. We are very high tech. Yeah. Um, basically, you just want to make sure it's straight. You've measured both ends. Uh huh. You mark your points. Do you use chalk, it looks like? We do use chalk because you can wipe it off and you won't be able to see it once the finish is Good done. Too. Okay, great. And then your level makes sure that you're definitely on. Right. First, I mean, you eyeball it, and then, of course, you, every two, second or third stripe, you want to make sure that, you know, you're on. You're not heading over that way. Well, I can tell we're not going to have any problems. You're going to be stripes all the way around yep. here. They're all going to be even. We're going to have juggling balls going through it. It's going to be great. It's going to be lots of fun. Now, speaking of fun, wait till you see the circus room. I can't wait. Well, welcome to the circus, or what's going to be the circus in here. Hey, Chris, how's it coming? Hey, Becky, how are you? How are you doing? Gary, good. good to meet you. Yeah. Chris and Lynn are going to take this room to a whole different level with mural painting. They're going to use a lot of three-dimensional elements in here that's going to enhance the room greatly. Well, I'm really excited about it because after I looked at the designs, I said, this is definitely what we want to do in here. Right, and after you can see out of the drawings, we're building a stage. Uh, over in this area, we'll have a kind of a vaudeville in front, and then uh, a dressing area over in the corner. There'll be a circus cart wagon over on that side that'll house the costumes and things for all the kids to play yeah, and with. Yeah, see, you're even you're oh. building the wheels. They're going to be dimensional to that. I mean, I love that. Yes, everything's uh, dimensionally and then painted so that it uh, it brings it out into the room. Okay. It's going to be so fantastic. And on this wall, what are you going to do on this wall over here? Uh, on that side, my wife will be painting an elephant mural. And uh, it'll have, um, you know, maybe some circus motif on the on the elephant, and uh, there will be planking. The whole ceiling will be painted uh, mural-wise to represent a, a inside of a circus tent. Well, and then we're going to actually use some real fabric in there as well that's in the same color family to kind of tie it all together. So, so customized. It is. It's absolutely beautiful. And, you know, this is a perfect example of the kind of faux finishes that we're doing in here and that we're sharing today because we've got muralists. Yes. We have faux finishers, and then we have now three-dimensional work that's going on, and so it's really going to go that whole gamut of what's available out there for homeowners. It takes it to a whole new level for decorative painting. Absolutely, because I cannot wait to see this all come together. OK, 
Okay, Gary, I think we might have a problem in here. Cindy, you and I didn't talk at all about a block bathroom. It's no problem at all. There's an excellent reason, and Cindy's going to tell you why. Yes, yeah, some faux finishes start off with a color that you never even would imagine. Like black. This one mm -hmm. would be black. Uh -huh. We have the black for the depth. In and then the, that's going to turn blue? No. Then the next step will be the foil. The foil. And then okay. we will have an embedded stencil and plaster over that with the blue. It'll be amazing, Vicki, when we finish. Oh my gosh, I love it. And is the foil going to go the entire room? The entire room. Because you'll be able to see bits and pieces of it through the blue. Oh, that is so cool. This it is a great gorgeous. process. Well, okay, I trust you totally. I'm back on the queue. have our decorative artists been busy. They found lots of wall spaces and ceilings to showcase their amazing talent. The children's study area has been upgraded with a magnetic paint and decorative brick look. It adds not only function, but a great feel to the space. The dome in the master entrance now has a textured metallic glaze. It gives an even more dramatic look to it. Following this look all the way down the hallway was the perfect touch. Now Grace and Mike, they were busy too. They added a serious amount of sophistication to our downstairs powder room with a genuine Italian plaster. The decorative painting above this mantel really brought the natural look of this room full circle. We needed a way to tie the stone in with just a plain drywall finish. Grace had just the answer. The office was a perfect spot for this great nautical touch. A compass sets off the room perfectly. You can set the mood in a room with paint, but you can also do it with lighting and with draperies and with the way you place your decor. Now this is our sunroom and I absolutely love this space. We started out making it look like maybe an old porch that was closed in over time. We started with a red brick floor. We used horizontal planking on the walls and we carried that planking right on up, the same effect into the pitch roof, giving it a light, bright look to it. Now, I thought it would be a lot of fun to use this room in a unique way, not like a traditional sunroom. So to give me a hand with the project, I asked my buddy Cecil if he would come and play house with me. Here you go, Cecil. Hi, Vicki. You know, when I stop and think about it, that's kind of what we do as creative designers all day is playhouse. We do, and I love this room. I love the light, all the natural light. I love the view. It's really amazing and just very relaxing and uh, it feels very warm. We really wanted to play up the natural elements in this room. Uh -huh. So um, we brought in an elm desk, an old kind of farmhouse table. It's being used as a desk right now. Uh -huh. um, this has a lot of function, lots of different things we can do with it. And I love the way it goes with the drapes because those kind of look like they're burlap at first glance. But when you touch them, you know they're silk. Absolutely. They're really great. But it's beautiful. a great natural element that we have. And so we have set up this space now to be used like maybe a family office, we could call it. The, a desk for her, for the mother to write invitations, people to do correspondence. You could do scrapbooking in here. The kids could do their homework in here. Uh -huh. um, and we brought in a lot of natural elements with the accessories. We've got the pottery. The pottery lamp here I think is great. It gives you good I love light. the color. It's just perfect with it. And it looks wonderful with um, the outdoors. We're also using seashells in sort of this fall theme, which I think is a little bit unusual. But as you can see, the colors really and look great. And what we're great. doing is we took away the white seashells and brought in things that have the brown elements right. in it to tie that into it. We also have these old wooden uh, holders for her note cards and stationery, which I think that rough feeling uh, looks really good in the room. And the other thing I like about the elements in the room is the whole idea of rough and smooth. Well, you know, the chairs that we selected in here, these great leather chairs, have the brass nail heads on them, but they're not shiny. There's nothing shiny in here at all. It all has that matte look to it. Right, and I think that also adds just to the whole natural uh, uh -huh. aspect of it. It's very relaxing. Nothing's really jumping out at you. Uh, it's very calm and serene. It works for me, and I love the seashells. We've got them carried over into the tables and through the whole aspect. But now I told you that Cecil was coming here to play house with me. That's because we're going to transform this space into 
a, a party. Well, I think that this is absolutely beautiful. Another great job done by us, Cecil. I think so too. Here, here. One of the most popular floor plans today in homes is one that's open like this. It has great benefits. For number one, when mom or dad is cooking dinner, they're not isolated from the rest of the family. Everybody can be out and enjoy each other's company. And when you're giving a party, you know all your guests like to hang out in the kitchen. So why not open your kitchen out to the rest of your area like we've done here? Now, there's some disadvantages to it as well. One thing is you have to learn how to float your furniture. And what do I mean by that? I mean, get your furniture away from the walls. So when you're buying furniture, you want to make sure you select furniture that is attractive both from the front as well as to the back. And you also need to think about how can I do seating for my whole family? How many people are there in your family? How many are going to be sitting down at one time? Do you usually have a large party? Well, in this particular home, we expect a crowd, so we wanted to have two couches that are running parallel to each other, facing so we would have seating comfortably for four people or six people, plus an armchair and an ottoman and some other furniture that can move around. Now, builders and decorators, this is the point where we kind of crash heads together. Builders always build things like on center, balanced, and square for the most part. That means that there's equal space on each side of the fireplace. The problem is when we get in there and we start decorating with our ideas of like floating these couches and you go to open the door to the patio, boom, it hits the furniture. You have to allow for little details like that. And if this is your idea of the perfect seating for your family, that means you're going to have to slide everything over. That means you're not on center anymore. For me, I just accept it and move on. It's much easier that way than worrying about it. So we've got perfect seating for everyone. Now, we've got couches that we selected that I think are perfect for any busy family. They're a nice, nubby feel. It is a portobello color because one of the things with open floor plans is it's got to match the other rooms around it. No longer are you just decorating one room at a time. In some cases, you're decorating the whole floor. This portobello color ties in beautiful with our big portobello island in our kitchen. We wanted to add some fun and color in there, so I selected some kind of funky wicker stools for that area. We brought that same color back into our living room with this beautiful turquoise velvet club chair. Now this is the only place we're committing ourselves to color in, is on this chair. And if later on you decide you want to change out colors, this can always go to a bedroom and you can replace it with another chair. Now if all brown is too boring for you, Look what we did on this side. We punched it up with color. Now, of course, you'd want to make both sides match in your home. But this is the print that we used on our ottoman. And I love ottomans, especially the ones that are on wheels that can move around easily. If you want to use some print and you don't want to make a big commitment, do it on the ottoman and on the pillows that you use. Very affordable way to add color and pattern to a space. Now, one of the things I like about ottomans, let me grab some baskets and I'll show you what I'm talking about, is when you use an ottoman instead of a coffee table, then you can accessorize with baskets. You can bring in some great color like the lime green, again punching it up, or maybe in the fall you want to go to a more neutral. This one I love because it has that same portobello color to it and it's round so it mirrors the shape of the ottoman. Great place, you can even you know, serve refreshments and snacks in there, throw some magazines in. It's a great look. For lighting for a space like this, again, think color and think function. 
Now, we're using a pottery lamp over here on our sofa table, a beautiful wood tone table with a pottery, just a nice, comfortable look. It brings in that lime green, another affordable way to add color to a space. On this side, we have a taller lamp. It has a whitewashed pottery feel to it, real old and antique, but it's bright, and it really ties in nicely with the white walls. We've got great linen draperies in here with, again, a portobello shading in the pattern of them, a great accent. And the last piece of furniture that we're going to be using in here is this little bench over to the side. This bench will allow you to have a place to put down your purse or maybe your guest coats when they come in. And it's also a great way to add additional seating by just moving it from here over to the other side of the living room in front of the fireplace when you're expecting a big crowd. So when you're thinking about your furniture and decorating in your home, float that furniture, think about scale, style, and color, and you'll end up with a room that the whole family can enjoy on a daily basis and you can be proud of when it's party time. One of the most requested items for new homes today are porches, and we've got some beautiful ones on this custom home. You want to start off with what I call great bones. By that, I mean furniture that's going to last a long time because it's a major investment. Out here, this porch is covered, but it's still open to the elements, so I selected all-weather wicker furniture for the porch. It looks fabulous. It has a great feel to it, but it's a plastic, so it's not going to be damaged by the weather. The cushion material, it also is weather resistant. But I also like to spark up things with my seating, so I've added a lime green linen pillow to it. Now this is not weather resistant, so I've got a basket over to the side. When I'm not using these, I can just store them in there. You could even put a piece of glass on top of a basket and use it for an end table. You might also want to think about how are you going to set your table. Yes, that's right. I set my table with a permanent setting when I'm not having a party like I've done today. And that utilizes two faux bois flower pots here with maiden hair fern growing out of the top of them and a simple seashell that I picked up at the beach in the middle of the table. Then when I get ready to have a party, these can be set to the side and we can add the party decorations. Now, I also have a seating area over here, which is perfect for just a couple to sit there and maybe have a glass of wine. We have a seashell table there, and if we want to in the fall, we can change that look by throwing an old quilt over the top of it, adding some fall mums, and we have a whole different look to it. On the front porch, we're using that faux bois again. This bench is made out of cement, and it's made to look like wood. That's what faux bois is. This is not going to move anywhere. Boy, you're going to have to have an army to pick it up. It's so heavy. But it's good bones again. All I have to do now for season to season is maybe in the summer put a basket of daisies there, a straw hat maybe, and in the fall, pumpkins and some mums. It could even be the perfect home for a scarecrow or two. So when you're thinking about your porches, think about versatility, start with great bones, and then decorate, decorate to your heart's content. I want to thank Gary Lord today and all the faux finishers. They are just doing a fantastic job. And of course, Cecil Adams for coming and playing house with me. It's always so much more fun to decorate when you do it with friends. Now, next time on For Your Home, we're going to see how all those faux finishes turn out. And you know you want to see, so don't miss the show. Plus, I have got tons of great ideas as I decorate all kinds of rooms in this house. I hope you'll join me next time right here on For Your Home. If you would like additional information about today's guests or project ideas, please visit us on the web at foryourhome.com. We will do our best to help you out.
for your home is made possible by Shaw Floors offers distinctive flooring options to fit a variety of decors. Shaw strives to have a positive impact on the environment by producing recyclable products like Anso Nylon Carpets and Epic Hardwoods. Shaw, where great floors begin. And by Ames. Ames True Timber has offered innovative landscape products since 1774, providing non-powered lawn and garden tools, wheelbarrows and lawn carts, watering products and decorative accessories, including planters. And by Custom Home Furnishings Academy, where the professionals learn to sew window treatments.